On to nitrate and phosphate, the most hotly debated subject in reefing with no satisfyingly definitive answer that even a majority agrees on, but there are better paths than others and mentalities that lead to higher success rates than others. We're going to take some risks today and likely going to get roasted by some, but pushing the boundaries on nutrients and furthering the conversation is worth it. Normally, we would share the science, thought leaders' positions, and where all of our experience has produced the best result make our case, and then after, share our approach that matches that. More or less, the process that anyone would use to build best practice decisions. This time, I'm gonna share our approach right up front, share all the supporting evidence and science and experience after. First, the right answer is not universal. It has to be applied to a goal. Our goal with these seven tanks is a safe range for the tanks. Multi-year success with not just hardy corals, but also moderate to even sensitive corals with the highest multi-year success rates with an approach that doesn't require us to play mad scientists with the tanks addicted to removal medias, chemicals, or constant nutrient testing. Most importantly, it has a clear why it's done this way so we can understand what's happening and how to use the test results that we do perform and adjust when the inevitable challenges materialize. First, we're going to select our range for inorganic phosphate at a goal of 0.1 parts per million, but an operating range of 0.05 to 0.15 parts per million that provides a buffer in either direction. If it goes outside of that, I would act and make changes to my approach of water, how much I feed, filtration, dilution, or water changes. 0.05 to 0.15 parts per million phosphates achievable by a wide range of skill sets, common equipment, and maintenance practices done right shouldn't require the use of constant phosphate removers. While GFO and solutions like lanthium chloride removers are great for solving periodic problems, we actually want to avoid their constant use in medias or chemicals that both add or remove many other elements or pollutants somewhat indiscriminately. Now, I probably haven't ruffled that many feathers with a goal of 0.1 parts per million phosphate or even an effective range of 0.05 to 0.15 before action. This is just a range where we believe any material negatives phosphates might have is outweighed by the benefits of an easy to achieve zone. Some reefers might argue higher or lower and that's fine. More important than picking our number is to pick a number. Any reasonable goal range will be more successful than no goal. Just a range where if it was over or under, you would do something about it. For some of you, that range will be small. For others, it will be large. But the point is, use your best judgment as to when too much of a good thing becomes pollution or poison and act. We suggest measuring phosphate just once a month or 12 times a year, and then track it in an app that can graph it. The only thing that you should care about is just it's not perpetually rising every month because that's a path to nowhere good. More specifically, it's a path to pollution becoming poison. Not the kind that causes rapid mortalities, just more susceptible to other stresses or subtle changes in health and coloration that may not be noticed if the effects are gradual. If it's rising month after month, then just change what or how you feed or up your filtration game. We'll show you how to do that today as well. There are a bunch of phone app options out that are just a few bucks to free. Aquarimate, Aquatic Log, Pocket Marine, and most controllers or monitor apps have a graphing function built in. As to nitrate levels, this might be the most controversial statement and where all of the debate about today's video will be had. I have no specific nitrate goal. Just let it land where it's going to land. The rationale for that considers the relationships of nitrate to phosphate in our foods. The ratio of nitrate to phosphate in most fish foods is in the range of 5 to 1 to 30 to 1. Without considering uptake in the tank, that means that our goal of 0.05 to 0.15 phosphate should produce around a range of 0.25 to 4.5 parts per million nitrate. I'd be most happy if it was in the middle of that, around two parts per million. Once you consider the different biological uptake ratios of various fish, their growth states, coral bacteria, and algae types, it might land at a different ratio that develops in the tank. But the point is get phosphate stable without removers and then track nitrate monthly in your app to see where it stabilizes. My preference is below five parts per million nitrate, but a lot of successful reefers let it stabilize as high as 20. Regardless, act once it's beyond your threshold. If you don't have one, pick one because any threshold is better than no threshold. There's one other piece of this puzzle. We're going to make sure we have ample sources of organic sources of nitrogen and phosphorus for the corals. We won't be stingy with fish foods. Most tanks will have a healthy amount of fish. We'll dose amino acids in particulate foods like reef roids, reef blizzard, or reef chili to meet those needs. Some animals that will accept larger prey will feed that as well. We'll use filtration or remove what isn't utilized so it doesn't pollute the tank. More common terms, heavy in, heavy out. There is a difference between inorganic and organic sources of nitrogen and phosphorus and something that I believe that only a small portion of the hobby has embraced or attempted to account for in their tanks, which represents a huge advancement opportunity for the hobby and the success rates with our animals. 
Inorganic nitrate and phosphate is near completely broken down and testable with our nitrate and phosphate test kits. Inorganic is also readily available for uptake by algae and other pests. Organic nitrogen and phosphorus is harder to test for, and as the name suggests, organic particles of fish food, fish waste, bacteria, plankton, and dissolved organics or particulate organics in coral foods. Many sources of organic nitrogen and phosphorus, like particulate foods, is biologically less available for uptake by algae and other pests. Coral polyps have mouths, as well as active transport mechanisms in their tissue to capture organic prey, particulates, and dissolved organics. So many wild corals acquire much of their phosphorus and nitrogen needs, as well as essential fatty and amino acids in the ocean's reefs. Most corals are not heavily dependent on inorganic nitrate and phosphate, which is nearly undetectable in most healthy ocean reefs. The corals in our aquarium may just shift to dependence on that inorganic nitrate and phosphate when organic nitrogen and phosphorus containing prey and particulates are simply not available.